Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Lara May, a clinical pharmacist specializing in functional medicine, as well as a certified yoga teacher and Reiki master. I run a truly integrative health coaching practice, encompassing functional medicine lab testing, yoga and meditation, and a sprinkling of Reiki energy medicine. Join me here on Light Body Radio to break through your health plateau and come into alignment with your natural vitality. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Light Body Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Lara May. And today I would like to continue the Wellness Illuminated series on the model. And as I'm sure you're aware by now, but if not, for those of you that are just tuning in for the first time, I am a certified life coach from the Life Coach School. And within the perspective and teachings of the Life Coach School, we use this tool called the model. And it's really a foundational tool used to understand and manage our thoughts, feelings, actions, and results. The model um, comprises five components, which are circumstances, thoughts, feelings, actions, and results. And from the perspective of the Life Coach School, um, I just want to give you a quick little background about each one. So the circumstance, these these are the neutral facts or events in the world that are outside of our control. So circumstances are objective, universally agreed on, and um, they should include no emotion whatsoever. And then our thoughts are what we're thinking about said circumstance. So these are sentences in our mind, our interpretations and beliefs about the circumstance, and thoughts are subjective and individual. And then when we have these thoughts, then it produces a feeling. So the feelings are the emotions, responses that are triggered by our thoughts. Feelings are internal experiences that arise as a direct result of the thoughts that we think. I'm going to say that again. Feelings are internal experiences that arise as a direct result of the thoughts that we think. So if you're not feeling great, then the first place you should look is your thoughts. What are you thinking that's creating this feeling? So the next aspect of the model are the actions. So when we have a circumstance and we have a thought about it and that creates a feeling, then from that feeling, we act or we do something or we don't do something. So the behaviors, actions that we take or don't t- or don't take that are driven by our feelings. Actions encompass everything we do or refrain from doing, and they are considered a critical link between our internal state, which are our thoughts and our feelings, and our external reality, which as our results or what we're creating for ourselves. And then, of course, the results. These are the outcomes or effects of our actions. The results stem directly from the actions that we take, and consequently, they reinforce the original thoughts that led to them, creating the feedback loop. So that's why this model is so powerful and important, because it can show us how our results are directly related to those thoughts that we were thinking that created the feelings and the actions. So this is, you know, a really powerful framework to work with. And that's why I really wanted to flesh it out for you guys here for each individual aspect of it. And again, so today we're talking about the actions. So in the model, the actions are seen as a bridge between our internal experiences, our thoughts and our feelings, and the external outcomes, which are our results, which we create in our lives. So, um, actions are how we express our feelings in the world. If we feel motivated, then we might be proactive or positive and taking positive steps towards our goals. But if we're feeling discouraged or despondent, then we normally move into behaviors of avoidance or complete inactivity or what we also call within the life coach school buffering. So if we binge Netflix shows or if we, um, you know, escape through drinking, drugs, smoking, sex, anything like that, that is considered buffering, which is our avoidance behaviors that um, manifest themselves through the expression of our emotion or our feeling of discouragement or despondency or avoidance. 
So um, our thoughts shape our feelings and our feelings drive our actions. So therefore, actions are a manifestation of our underlying thoughts. So by observing our actions, we can trace them back to the thoughts that are generating them. So I want you to think about that, maybe in context of something that's going on for you today. Is there something that you're having, you know, what's the circumstance and what is your thought about it and what feeling is that creating? And from that feeling, how are you behaving? How are you showing up? So is it something within a relationship that you want to change or maybe you don't like? Or maybe you're in a great place. Maybe, you know, it's always really powerful and helpful to even reflect on those days when you're feeling great. And it's oftentimes the days that we're feeling great and really showing up that we forget to actually reflect and examine what's going on that's creating this for me today. Because it's when it's challenging and hard that that will really come in handy. So, um... What else can I say about this? So the actions that we take or don't take produce specific results in our lives. And that seems like obvious, duh. But if we want to change our results, if we want to change what is really, you know, happening or or what we're getting from it, then we need to change our actions. And to change your actions effectively, you must change the thoughts and the feelings driving them. So by understanding that our actions are within our control and are driven by our thoughts and feelings, the model really empowers us to take responsibility for our lives. And instead of blaming circumstances, the model encourages a proactive approach where we focus on changing our thoughts and changing our feelings to produce different actions and consequently different results. And again, like I mentioned before, this really, um, this tool shines a light on this feedback loop that we often create. And so the results that are created by our actions provide evidence that reinforces that thought that, um, that is creating that feeling, that is creating that action, that is, you know, creating what is materializing or manifesting for us. And so, um, you know, Actions are pivotal, are pivotal because they are the um, action step component that translates our internal into our external. And by mastering the ability to manage our emotions and our thoughts, we can intentionally choose actions that align with our results and want to and that we want to create in our lives. And so this tool is amazing because you can use it to evaluate what you're unconsciously doing. And so that would be like, let's say, let's just take uh, maybe like a career choice that's coming up for you right now. So maybe you're looking for a new job and you have an interview and you actually, you got an offer. Fantastic. Amazing. But there's, you know, just like with everything else in this life, there's pluses and minuses. So maybe the job is amazing. It has great benefits. It's doing exactly what you want, but it's not in the location that you want. And so I want you to take that circumstance of you got a job offer. That is the factual piece of the story. You have a job offer. And then I want you to think about like, what is your thought about that? Knowing that the job is not in the location that you want. What are your thoughts? And when we're first, you know, starting to work with the model, I encourage doing a thought download. So just getting all of your thoughts about it out on paper, the positives and the negatives, and then go back and look at the thought, figure out which thought is the most prevalent, the most front of mind, the one that's sort of nagging you the most, or the one that's like leading the charge. And then I want you to tune in and really discern, okay, when I think this thought, what feeling comes up for me? What am I feeling when I think this thought? So when I think the thought, the job is not where I want it to be. It's not in the location that I want it to be. What do I feel? Do I feel discouraged? Do I feel disappointed? Um, Do I feel um, maybe a little pissed off and frustrated? Like, man, I have all these other positive aspects. Why can't this also just line up too? Um, You know, so what is your feeling? And then from that feeling, how do you act 
Do you accept the job offer? Do you keep looking for other jobs? Do you talk to friends and family about the possibility and the options? Do you maybe do nothing at all because you're paralyzed and indecision? Uh, So there's lots of things that you do and don't do from this perspective of the feeling that you're feeling because of the thought that you're thinking about the circumstance. And so then from those actions, what's the result that you're creating? Maybe the result is, is that you still don't have a new job. Maybe the result is that you do have a new job and now you're looking, you know, about at commuting options. Um, you know, maybe the result is that you have a new job and you have all this extra income and you've created a you know whole new aspect of your life. So it's important to see like the results that you have are directly related to those actions that you took, which were directly related to the feeling that you felt and the thought that you were thinking about this one circumstance that you got a job offer. So if you have a result that you don't like, or you don't want, or you want it to look different, be different, feel different, now we can work backwards. So maybe the result is, well, I didn't take the job. So the result really is that you're still stuck in the same job that you were and or unemployed. I don't know, whatever the situation is for you. So that's your result now. And so looking from that perspective, work backwards. What were the actions that you took or didn't take to get to where you are today? And what were you feeling when you were taking or not taking those actions? And what was the thought that you were thinking that created that feeling? So see how the circumstance can stay the same, but you can work it backwards based on what is your current reality? What is your current result to really understand how you are showing up or not showing up? And then you can also do what we call We call this like the unintentional model. So examining your unintentional, unaware behaviors, actions, results, thoughts, feelings. And then we can do an intentional model. So really either starting with any. So some people want to start with a feeling. So I want to feel this way when I have this result. And then you can fill in, okay, what would I be thinking when I feel that way? And what will I be doing when I feel that way? Or you can start from the perspective of, well, this is the result that I want. And what are the other aspects around that that I have to create in order to get that result? So if I really want that new job, with this pay and this location, then what actions do I need to take to get there? And what will I be feeling that will support those actions? And what thoughts will I need to be thinking to create that feeling that supports those actions? So I hope this helped you a little bit and, you know, I can flesh this out a little more and I, you know, I feel like I've talked about this a lot, but, you know, I think it's always worth repeating that our thoughts are the interpretation, beliefs, and stories that we tell ourselves about our circumstance. And these thoughts generate the emotional response. So again, that circumstance is factual. It is. I have this job, I don't have this job, I got this offer, I didn't, or I'm in this relationship, or, you know, this is my role in the relationship. It's something that can, um, like, almost be argued in court, it's factual. Or if you like, you're examining um, a disagreement between two people, you know, quote, this is what was said. Okay, so this is what was said in the argument. What is your thought about it? And write down your thoughts. And then when you think those thoughts about what that person said, how do you feel? And when you have that feeling, how do you act? How do you show up? How do you respond? Do you fight back? Do you get sarcastic? Do you respond with love and understanding and compassion? Like what are your actions based on that feeling? And then what result does that create within the dynamic of that relationship or that thing that was said? So again, the feelings are driving your actions. So feelings 
are the emotional experiences created by our thoughts, but they directly influence our behavior. They affect how we act and how we show up. So positive thoughts and feelings. So examples of how some actions reflect our internal state. Thought is, I can totally handle this project. No problem. So you're feeling motivated, you're feeling confident. And from there, your actions could be you organize your work, you settle deadlines, you seek resources, you collaborate with others, you stay focused. But if you have a negative thought, uh, this project is too overwhelming, then you could be feeling overwhelmed or anxious. And from there, you could start procrastinating, avoiding tasks, not seeking help, and feeling stuck. And so also, it's, in, it's important to understand the re- repeated behaviors. So we are humans. We're creatures of habit. Our brain wants us to be, you know, wants us to survive and wants us to, in its version of thrive, which might not actually look like real thriving in our lives today in, you know, in the 21st century. So um, how are our thoughts really creating these behavioral patterns, these actionable patterns. So it's interesting to look at that aspect too. And then also another layer of this is like body language and habits. What are our nonverbals or our habitual gestures? Maybe some of us have the, you know, um, habitual response of of eye rolling when we're in conflict, or, you know, maybe we actually stop breathing, or we stop making eye contact, or we go into shutdown mode. Um, So these are all interesting aspects of actions that help us understand our internal state and understand our patterns for the purpose, hopefully, of awareness, and then change if we want to. And that's also something that's completely within your power. Maybe you want to change something. Maybe you don't. That's okay. But the awareness piece is the most important. And so we do all this thought work and we identify our challenging, unhelpful thoughts so we can shift our feelings, so we can feel better, so we can consciously and consequently um, with intention choose our thoughts, choose our feelings choose our actions and create amazing results for ourselves. So this is also part of emotional awareness. You know, there's all these different labels and aspects of it, but um, it all comes back to awareness. So these are your practical steps to align your actions with your desired outcomes. So this is the action piece of the episode that I like to leave you with. So awareness, notice and acknowledge your current thoughts and feelings and notice how they're connected. The best way to do this is to write them down. You don't have to, but it's it'll it's it's that visual piece that really reinforces with our brain. Oh, when I think this, this is how I feel. And really owning that, owning your the autonomy and the control that you have over that. Uh, that's there's nothing more empowering, and there's nothing better to get you out of that feeling of victimhood or out of control than to own what's going on in your brain and owning how it's making you feel and owning that you have control over that. And then evaluation. Assess how these thoughts and feelings are influencing your actions. And then adjustment. About, you know, like you evaluated. So how am I influencing myself? What am I doing? What am I not doing? And then decide what you want to change about that or what you want to keep about it. Um, You know, maybe you're actually evaluating a beautiful, healthy relationship. And, you know, so it's all about like, oh, well, these are the aspects that I really love. And these are the aspects that I want to keep and foster and perpetuate and flourish. And then, so once you've decided what you're going to adjust or not adjust, then, you know, again, there's actions. So taking the new actions that align with the new positive feelings and your new intentional thoughts. And then again, we're back to reviewing and reflecting. And so again, these, this is a cycle, um, but these are action, like practical steps to, that you can take 
to really understand the power of your actions within the creation of your life, the creation of your results, and how it really links up to those thoughts and feelings. So awareness, evaluation, adjustment, action, and review. So I hope this episode has helped you today, again, have a deeper understanding of the model and why you might want to implement it in your life if you are looking for changes, if you are, you know, frustrated or curious as to why the same cycles or the same things keep, quote, happening to you, then it's time to step out of that role of victim of things keep happening to me and really, you know, take responsibility and take control over um, what's happening, what's going on, how you're showing up, how you're, how you're partaking um, and contributing to the evolution and unfoldment of your life. So I love you all. If you want to work with me, you can find me at drlaramay.com where all my health coaching, life coaching, and energy healing uh, services live. And if you want to become a trained Reiki practitioner or Reiki master, I also teach angelic, Asui, and crystal Reiki classes periodically throughout the year. So definitely check that out as well. And definitely sign up for the email list because I have periodic sales and bundles. And one of the best ways not only to get a great uh, discount or, you know, um, entry point into working with me, um, is to bundle bundle classes and services together. So oftentimes I'll offer like a bundle of life coaching um, classes or um, services, sessions, sorry, a bundle of life coaching sessions together so that you can get like a series of six at, at a great discount. And so you can work with me over a period of time and really start to understand and see how this can be so helpful for your life. And the same with the health coaching I offer. Usually I like to bundle at least three to six health coaching sessions together too, so that you have that follow-up, you have that accountability, you have that support and, um, and to really support you through the changes that you're wanting to create in your life. So anyway, drlaramay.com. I'm at drlaramay on all the socials, D-R-L-A-R-A-M-A-Y on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all the places. Love you guys. Catch you on the next episode.